the linchpin, the main thing that decreases performance is, quote unquote, the relative drop in blood volume that occurs within just five minutes of vigorous exercise, which typically you your blood volume drops eight to 10% feeding the heart because it, it now has to flow towards working skeletal muscle. And the blood v- volume also has to flow to the skin now to dissipate heat. So essentially you have competition between blood flowing to the heart and now blood flowing to working skeletal muscle and to the skin. So you get this drop of up to 10% in blood volume. So if you can drink salt solutions before competition and you can boost your blood volume by eight to 10%, you can then prevent the drop that occurs. And by doing this, you're going to have a larger volume to cool yourself off because we need to understand that we actually pull water from our blood to actually create sweat. So you will have a larger amount of fluid to cool off and dissipate heat You'll have better cardiac output and blood flow to actually remove waste and to deliver nutrients. And by increasing your blood volume, you decrease myocardial oxygen demand on the heart and the perception of fatigue. You know, you kind of hold your chest sometimes when you work out a lot, literally because your chest is becoming some, and your heart is becoming somewhat ischemic. It's not getting the oxygen delivered through the blood because there's that drop in blood volume. So you boost the blood volume. Now you can deliver a lot more oxygen nutrients to the heart and you don't get that perception of fatigue and that chest pain. Yeah, there was actually um, experiments performed in the 1940s showing us that if you don't get enough salt, it can lead to um, fluid retention and edema, the exact opposite of what people think. People think that salt leads to um, like an accumulation of fluid, but actually not getting enough salt can do that because salt puts fluid where it should go. And if you don't have enough electrolytes or sodium, which is the primary controller of water movement, then the water can't move to where it needs to go and it pools. And you that leads to what's called edema or swelling in the arms and the legs. So that's a huge myth that high amounts of salt lead to swelling. It's typically low amounts of salt that does that. getting the timing right is important and getting the concentration of salt to fluid is important as well. You know, the goal again is to get an eight to 10% boost in blood volume. Now, if you look at a typical athlete, their blood volume is 40% higher than a, just a, like a typical non-athletic adult. So a man, a typical adult man has five liters of blood and an adult woman has four liters an elite athlete will have 40% more. So like, let's say seven liters of blood. Elite, like highly elite rowers will have almost twice that. They'll have nine liters of blood volume. So the main adaptation to exercise is an increase in blood volume because that gives you the greatest net return on investment. you got to figure out a salt solution that will actually lead to an increase in blood volume. And basically, you need solutions that are as salty as sweat or even more so. So that would essentially be about 3,000 milligrams of sodium, upwards of 4,300 milligrams of sodium in anywhere from 26 ounces to a full liter of fluid, respectively. And you start slowly consuming those salt solutions 90 minutes before competition and you slowly consume it over about 30 minutes. And then by the time you start competing, your blood volume is peaked, your blood volume is at eight to 10% higher, and then you're, you're gonna reap all of those benefits. Annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points. From the website, doctorstotrust.com, you can view the summary notes and share or print the PDF of those notes.